Hi, this is Professor Fernandez. In this video, we are going to work out an example on finding formulas for sequences. Um, this is part of the Calculus 2 course that I'm teaching, and this example comes from Lesson 3 in the course. You can head over here to the course site to download the course notes and all these other goodies. All right, so let me zoom in here so we can start the example. Um, the prompt says, assuming that the patterns below continue, determine A sub n. We'll talk about what that is in a minute and the appropriate starting value for the sequence. Okay, so as I said, this is a video about finding formulas for sequences. So we have a bunch of sequences in this example, and we want to find a formula for them. This is what the A sub n stands for. So just as a quick review, right, in A sub n, n here is the index. Usually you'll see um, index starting at one, n equals one. And if we're talking about an infinite sequence, all of these are infinite sequences, you can tell by these ellipses points, then n will go off to infinity. Right? And this will generate a sequence whose first term is a1, next term is a2, next term is a3, and so on and so forth. So I'll give you a very simple example. What if a sub n is just n? Right? Then what's the sequence that that generates? Well, you start at 1, and you put in n equals 1 into whatever the formula for the a sub n is. Right? So it's just n. So n equals 1 gives you 1. Then you move on to the next number for n, that's integer, n equals 2, put that in, you get 2, 3, and so on. So this compact way of expressing the sequence generates this particular sequence, 1, 2, 3, 4, and onward. Okay, what's really going on in this example is we want to go backwards. So what if I told you that the sequence uh, is this, so 2, 4, uh, 8, um, 16, and so on. What we want to do is we want to say this is equal to some a sub n formula for some starting value going off to infinity. So the question then is how do we find that formula and how do we find the starting value? Okay, the fastest way to do this is to try to look at the sequence and figure out some patterns, right, that you see. Any patterns that you see, really, you want to write these down, right? So one pattern you might have noticed is that every term that uh, is uh, next in the sequence is two times the previous term. So four is two times uh, two, uh, and then eight is four times two, and then 16 is eight times two. So I'm always multiplying by two. Once you figure out that pattern, then you want to quantify the pattern. You want to express the pattern in some form uh, using an equation, right? So this is just two, and four is two times two, and 8 is 2 times 2 times 2, and 16 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. <laughs> um, so this is 2, this is 2 squared, this is 2 cubed, this is 2 to the fourth. So now I've re-expressed the sequence, right? So my sequence looks like this. And this makes it a lot easier, you can see, to find the pattern because it looks like, you know, if I just put in the missing number here, the, the, the hidden one, it looks like the formula for the sequence is just 2 to the n, right? Because every term in the sequence is a power of 2. And then once I find the formula for the sequence, then I go back and I, you know, I've answered this question. Then I go back and I answer this question. What is the starting n value? Um, so what's the starting value here? Well, we start with, uh, we look at our formula. Where is the n in our formula? It is in the power. We look at the first term. What is the first n value? It's 1. So that's the answer. That is the starting value for n. So n equals 1 off to infinity. And then we can check our work, right? What sequence does this generate? Well, if I plug in n equals 1 over here, I get 2 to the first. And then plug in n equals 2, I get 2 squared, 2 cubed. So on, it generates this sequence, which is the one we start with. So check. So this down here is indeed the a sub n formula with the correct starting value that generates this sequence. Great. So one more thing I want to say before going back to the example, just as a way of, again, giving you uh, a more solid foundation for this topic. Um, the a sub n formula that we just derived is not unique, right? We could have expressed this in a different way. So for whatever reason, rather than viewing this as 2 to the first, we could equivalently view this as 2 to the 2 minus 1. Why? Well, just because it's math, right? We, we can do lots of things, or lots, there's lots of freedom. And then we could view this as 2 to the 3 minus 1. 3 minus 1 is 2. 2 squared is 4. We could view this as 2 to the 4 minus 1. And this one is 2 to the 5 minus 1. Okay, so this is a different 
representation of the same sequence. So what would be the A sub n here? Well, it's still a power of two, but now the power, right, is, is always has a minus one in it. So there's a minus one here. Um, and then what's the n value? Well, there's still something that's being uh, indexed uh, and incremented by one every time. So I'm just going to put n here. But now the starting value changes, right? So I can't really start with the same n value that I did before. If I start with n equals one, then the first term in this representation would be two to the one minus one. That's two to the zero. That's one. One is nowhere in this sequence, right? It is not a term of the sequence. So this starting value um, over here, n equals one, does not work to represent the sequence. So instead, it doesn't mean that I abandon this way of expressing the sequence, um, but it means that I have to think about a different starting value. So what would be a different starting value that might work? Um, well, you kind of see it here, right? So n equals two. So if I then try it with this um, formula for a sub n, two to the two minus one, that gives me two to the first, that's two. That's the first starting, uh, first uh, term in sequence. And then next n value, two to the three minus one, that's two squared, that's four, that's the next term in the sequence. So we could just as correctly express this sequence as two to the n minus one, starting from two to infinity, right? And I'm just gonna write over the original a sub n formula with its original starting value that we got a minute ago to just step back and, and help us compare these two representations. Okay, so I'm just gonna move things around here. Give me a second, move the entire sequence. Okay, so this sequence equals either this or that, right? This is the one we got earlier. This is the one we just derived. Question to you, you know, which one is correct? <laughs> And the answer is both of them are correct, as we just showed earlier. Uh, another question might be, which one is, should I use? And the question, and the answer is, there's no good answer for that question, right? Um, they are both equivalent representations of the same sequence. What I really want you to take away, though, is beyond you know the fact that they are equivalent representations, that there are yet other equivalent representations. You know, I could try two to the I don't know n squared plus seven uh, minus uh, one over n. That may or may not work. I don't know, but maybe there is a starting n value, right? Maybe there's a way to get this to work. Um, so there, there are many, many other options to represent the sequence, right? Um, but you want to make it easy on yourself, clearly. So you generally, as a rule of thumb, want to go with the easiest representation, the most algebraically simple representation of the sequence. So if I were trying to come up with an a sub n formula for this sequence, right, I would land on this one with a slight preference of that one over this one because of this n minus one. Makes it slightly more algebraically complicated. Okay, so big takeaway from there is that there isn't one unique way to represent a sequence. Um, and then second big takeaway from, from, you know, embedded in that is as you change the representations, your starting value for the sequence might change. Okay, all that being said, let's go through the examples now and they will go much faster since we've discussed all that. First example here, looking for patterns again, the first pattern we notice is that there's a one in the numerator for every term in this sequence. Second pattern we notice is that uh, if we write one as one over one, then the denominators are just counting off, right? So I could just leave an n down there. And then now I have to come up with the correct starting value for n to, that actually generates the terms in the sequence. So, well, if I'm saying the denominator is n, and the first term has a one in the denominator, then n bigger than or equal to one makes sense. So I'm gonna try this as my a sub n formula. And then let's check, right? If I plug in one here, one over one, that's one, first term in the sequence, check. Uh, if I plug in the next n value two, one over two, that's one half, um, second term in the sequence, check, right? So I could keep checking, but it's pretty clear that indeed one over n starting at one going off to infinity represents this sequence, right? So there we go, that's part A. Okay, let's take a look at part B. Looking for patterns here again, I'm gonna write one as one over one because everything else is a fraction. So we can then lump one over one in as a fraction as well. Um, numerator also has a one always. So I have a one over something. Now let's look at the denominators. There's one, there's two, there's four, and there's eight. So two, four, eight, multiplying by two here. So again, earlier we talked about how that effectively 
generates a power of 2. So this is 2 to the first, 2 squared, 2 cubed. And then we can, you know, once we're looking at it with this lens, we can look at 1 as 2 to the 0. So this clearly looks like a 2 to the n down here for the denominator. Uh, where would n start? Well, if this is 2 to the n and the first denominator is 2 to the 0, then n bigger than or equal to 0 is where we're going to start. So this sequence can be represented by 1 over 2 to the n, starting with 0 and going on to infinity. Okay, how about part C? Um, fractions over here, so I'm going to make this a fraction as well. And then let's look at what's happening in the numerator. Aha, so they're not all ones, like over here, but there is a pattern. So 0, 1, 2, 3. So that looks like n to me, just counting off, right? Like, like the first sequence we talked about in the video. How about the denominator? Well, there's a 5, 25, which is 5 times 5, so 5 squared. 125, that's 5 cubed, and sure enough, 5 is 5 to the first, and then 1 over here is 5 to the 0. So I look like, it looks like this is 5 to the n for the denominator. Um, and then looking at the first term here, right, 5 to the 0, so it looks like n equals 0 is going to be my starting value. Um, but if I just do this, right, I'm not quite reproducing the sequence because these terms are negative. Uh, and everything here is positive. So I have to get the sequence to generate those negative terms. Notice, by the way, that first term is not negative. I'll say it that way. Second term is negative. Third term, not negative. Fourth term, negative. So there's, this is an alternating sequence. In other words, the negativity of the terms alternate. The way you build that into a sequence is by multiplying the a sub n formula by a factor of minus 1 to the, and then it could be n, it could be n minus 1, it could be n plus 1, depending on your starting value. Try minus 1 to the n as a start, right? Uh, and then double check. So let's try, again, starting at 0, writing out a sub 0, minus 1 to the 0, times 0 over 5 to the 0, and multiplying by 0, so that's 0. Okay, that's the first term, great. How about a sub 1? Minus 1 to the first times 1 over 5 to the first. Again, I'm, I'm using this formula here. Uh, and then if I try to simplify down here, I get minus 1 fifth. Hey, that's the second term. And then just for good measure, let's try a sub 2. Minus 1 squared times uh, 2 over 5 squared. So that's plus 1 over uh, times 2 over 25. Positive 2 over 25. Hey, that's the third term. Okay, so this is indeed starting to generate all the terms in the sequence, right? So that's our a sub n formula. Okay, last one here, part D, looking for patterns. The numerator is always incrementing by 1, so it's counting off, starting at 1, right? So I'm just going to put n equals 1 already to infinity. What about the denominator? Well, the denominator is also counting off, but it's starting at a, you know, one more than the original, uh, than the numerator, really. And in fact, that's a pattern. So 3 is 2 plus 1, 4 is 3 plus 1, and so on. We've already got an n in the numerator. So if the denominator is 1 more than the numerator, then the denominator should be n plus 1. Okay, and then again, double check for good measure. Starting at 1, a1 equals 1 over 1 plus 1, 1 half. First term check. Uh, a sub 2 is 1 over 2 plus 1. 1, uh, oops, sorry, this is n, which is uh, what we did correctly for a1. For a2, we have a 2 over 2 plus 1, that's 2 thirds. Check, right? So this is indeed our formula for the sequence. Great, so thanks for watching.